Ken Verkamen, I'm an attorney in Edison. I'm up the street. I'd say, yeah, for the fed people, you can almost walk to my office. And they've asked me to come in to the library to talk about wills, uh, estate planning, probate, power of attorney, living will. So I'm here to answer your questions. If you have questions, raise your hand like in school. I'll try to answer them rather than wait till afterwards. So, a lot of times people say, hey, why do I need to have a will? I'm married, doesn't everything go to my spouse? And I goes, uh, uh, yes, but your spouse also is not gonna live forever. And part of doing planning is make it as easy as possible for your kids, your family, everyone else. When people are grieving, they should also have to be worried about, oh, what do we do now, what do we do now? Now, a lot of times people, uh, I'll, I'll use the, uh, the magic word cheap out. Well, I want to save the money. No, you're not saving any money because it costs the family much, much more money if people do not uh, have the documents done ahead of time. So an example is, if there is no will, um, that means that uh, unless it's a spouse, the person who, uh, uh, who becomes in charge of the estate is called the administrator. They have to spend money to take out a thing called a surety bond. So like an insurance policy, it costs a grand uh, or more per year. What, uh, certainly a will costs less than a thousand dollars. Also, that means that if the children are the beneficiaries, all the children have to sign a, a renunciation, then they gotta sign in front of a notary, and they're gonna be filed in front of a circuit's office. Now, everyone says, well, I'm sure all my kids will work together and everything will be easy. Yeah, uh, while you're alive, of course they're gonna work together. They're not gonna say, like, uh, you know, at, at Thanksgiving table, hey, listen, after you die, I'm gonna screw my brawler. <laughs> you, know, you know, so, you know, why make them go through all this extra work? I'm involved in a state here in Edison. There's three kids, mom passes without a will. I'd say, yeah, okay. The one kid lives uh, here in Central Jersey, the other kid lives in North Carolina. The third one's in prison in New York. He goes, I'm outside of the renunciation. Well, because he wouldn't sign the renunciation, uh, we had to file a complaint or to show cause uh, to go in front of a superior court judge to ask that they appoint the brother who would make sense here in Central Jersey to be the administrator. How much money did that lady save by not having a will? Zero. I'd say, uh, you know, spend the, uh, the four hundred five hundred dollars getting a will done, and you save money for the family. I'd say, yeah. Uh, if there's no will, also, it all, oftentimes it creates arguments and fights amongst the family. I'd say, yeah. Uh, you know, grieving time is not the time to also have one more thing done. Um, I'd say nobody decides. Hey, listen, I'm, you know, I, I've been plan, I've been, I have, I have a week off, and I'm going to go on vacation on Friday, but I'm going to wait till Thursday afternoon to decide where I'm going and start packing in. You plan ahead of time, and planning makes everything, everything easier. Now, people also put up things because, well, uh, I got to, uh, you, know, um, you know, figure stuff out. Well, most people want it to go to spouse or kids or people they like uh, because if you don't have a will, um, people that uh, uh, you dislike or may dislike you and don't care about you are the ones getting it. It's, very, it's, it's unfair. Like a different fellow passes without a will. Uh, one of his... One of his kids had predeceased him. Uh, that meant uh, that that guy, the guy who predeceased that kid, had a son who never ever, you know, um, hadn't seen his grandfather in uh, ten years. But that kid, uh, the grandson, now was entitled to one third of the estate, and that was also the one that caused the most problem. When are we getting our money? When are we getting? When are we getting our money? Now, people put off things because well, I don't know. But getting the documents done is easy. It's easy. Let's see, what our office does, and most attorneys do, we mail you uh, uh, or email uh, a short questionnaire. We used to ask a whole lot of questions regarding people's assets. However, in New Jersey, I'd say, yeah, they, uh, they actually reduced taxes. So they did away with the New Jersey estate tax last year. They made inheritance tax, so there's no tax that's going to children or grandchildren, I'd say, or spouse. So. The only, the, only, the only people that really have to worry about taxes are the people in the front row that have $11.5 million. And all you people in the other rows that don't have $11.5 million um, don't have to worry about that. So um, basically the attorney asks questions. Okay, what's your name? And try to spell it right. Are you married? Uh, and then the important question is, okay, who's going to be the executor of your estate? The executor is a person that... Uh, um, 
you know, basically is in charge. Now, believe it or not, New Jersey is also uh, an easy state. New Jersey is probably the easiest state to do the uh, the estate administration probate process. All that the executor needs to do is take the original will, death certificate, check for $150 and meet with the surrogate, and we can make arrangements to have the surrogate come out uh, here to Edison. You know, uh, they're, they're by appointment, they'll meet us in Edison, uh, at the, uh, in the mayor's office, Piscataway, at the senior center. This is why you don't gotta drive around your Brunswick looking for a parking space. And I was talking yesterday to the county clerk, uh, and I uh, said, listen, there is, there is no handicapped parking anywhere near the surrogate's office or the court. There used to be one across the street that I used when I was on crutches for running injuries. And now you got, now you have to be able to be walk or be wheeled um, up a hill, let's see, uh, two blocks to even get to the administration building. And a lot of times the tough part is not wheeling down, uh, up the hill, it's wheeling down, hold it, hold it on so it doesn't escape. Okay, so now you have an executor one and executor two. You never want to have joint executors. There's a reason why there's not two presidents of the United States at the same time, and you know, two governors, two mayors. You have one person as the captain of the ship, and the other, per the other person is the number two. You know, uh, even, now, even if they were twins and lived together, I said, listen, why are we making twice as much work for people? Let's see. That means that two people got to go to the circuit's office. Two people got to sign the, uh, co the contract with the realtor for the listing. Two people got to sign the contract for sale. Two people then got to sign the addendum. Two people have to go to the closing. The idea is making it less work. That's kind of my thing. Making it less work and as easy as possible. <coughs> and on, on the other hand, sometimes you got uh, uh, two kids that don't agree. I had an estate where the uh, you know dad put both kids. Okay, these two brothers couldn't agree upon what color the sky was. Brother number one says, "Hey, the sky's blue." The other one goes, "No, it's gray. You're stupid. You've always been stupid." I remember the judge saying to these guys, hey, fellas, come on, you know, why don't you guys go out and have a cup of coffee? And I'm sure there's some good times, you know, before. Uh, so, now I mentioned that uh, we used to ask a whole lot of, yes, ma'am, you had a question. How would you determine who you should make the executor? Should it be a family member? <coughs> so the question is, who should be the executor? And oh, you get the book, Law Points for Seniors, even though you're not a senior. And you too. Okay, so, yeah, the typical person, because, you don't need to have experience in accounting and tax and things like that. The executor uh, usually brings in attorneys or accountants if, if, if need be. So uh, typically, uh, I usually suggest, listen, the executor's best being one of the beneficiaries. Why have an outsider do it? Uh, now, an, an executor can take a commission of 5% on the first $10,000, 3.5% on the, the estate up to a million dollars. But I usually say to most executors, listen, if it's being divided equally between your brothers and sisters, don't take a commission unless your goal is to piss them off and, um, and uh, create hard feelings. So, you know, the rule of thumb is, are you gonna see these people in the future at weddings or family events? Yes, okay. Now, sometimes we use it as a hammer for people that are giving us a hard time, like brother in prison. You know, we say, uh, we will not take a commission uh, as long as everyone, you know, uh, doesn't give us a hard time and does, uh, and, and helps out as best as possible. Did that answer your question on it? No, here's also, my rule of thumb is, can the person walk up a flight of steps and drive? We're redoing a document for uh, uh, a past client, local, uh, local couple, but they're both the walkers. I'd say the husband has bad eyes, you know, he can barely see. And I goes, listen, how are you gonna get to the circuit's office and 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 do do all the do all this all the work? I'd say I says, we're not I said, we're not anti walker people or not having a driver's license, but let's be let's be practical on this. It would make sense to have do, uh, the one daughter as executor one because she knows more about your your finances. All right, so um, now we do ask the people, okay, do you have any real estate in New Jersey? Two, do you have any real estate somewhere else? Now, a will that's done in New Jersey is valid in any other state. If you decide, okay, listen, I don't like the cold uh, weather anymore in the winter, and I'm going to go to South Carolina, go to Florida, 
the will is valid there. Yes, ma'am? Is it valid in other countries? It is not. You asked a question, by the way, so you get the book. I'm saying so. So the question is, is a will valid in uh, another country? And the, uh, the best answer I tell everyone is, I don't know and ask that other country uh, now. So it's very common, my office is up the street and that's, someone says, listen, I have property in India, I have property in Pakistan, I have property, I go wherever. Uh, will the will be valid in there? I goes, I don't know. I'd say, yeah. Lawyers got in trouble because they goes, they would say, I assume. Mm -hmm. I would assume that's the law. I'd say, yeah. And this, the law could, the law could change. Uh, so assume is always the wrong answer. Let's see, one time this lady assumed she had enough gas to make it from Cocoa Beach to Orlando Airport to make her flight. Because it was a, a type of rental car where you didn't have to, uh, uh, you could leave it empty. Well, she is so wrong and ran out of gas on the side of the road. That's it. I always rub that in on my wife every time she ran out of gas. Okay, but so, but um, if you have real estate in another state, I'd say there is a, still a mechanism that has to be done in the other state. That's called ancillary probate. So, uh, for example, my father has a condo in Florida. If he was to pass, uh, will gets probate in New Jersey, but then. There's a procedure you gotta go through in wherever the state the person owns owns land. Now, um, people sometimes come in and goes, I wanna have a trust. My mother-in-law used to always say, I wanna come in and get a trust. We, I'd say, were you watching Susie Orman? She goes, oh yes. Goes, Susie Orman is absolutely right. If you have a view, uh, property in New York, Florida, California, the probate process is very expensive, very complicated. But New Jersey, I go, I go, why do you need a four or $5,000 trust when a $400 will is just as good? You don't, you don't need that. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, I want to avoid probate. Why, are you leaving your property to the Nazis and you don't want anyone to know? You know, you know it, it, um, rich people sometimes do trust because they don't want people to know their business or who they're giving it to. But most people, hey, I'm giving it to my kids and my grandkids, and by the way, more and more people are giving assets to grandkids rather than their own kids. Mm -hmm. That's okay. why I'm here. Uh, what's that? That's why I'm here. My yeah. daughter's in the will. Yeah. She's 16. Yeah. Well, because <laughs> let, me tell you, let me tell you why, okay? Let's say uh, a lot of times for the people that have grown kids, if they inherit money, they're going to go out and buy the luxury car. Let's say, uh, mm -hmm. Or they're going to go on the luxury trip. Let's say, uh, but then the grandkid has like three hundred thousand dollars in student loans, four hundred thousand dollars in student loans. Yeah, I'd say yeah. Educate investing in that grandkids' education is the best thing you can do for them, so that they don't walk out, you know, after a happy day with that cap and gown and da na na na. na. They goes and then like uh, they start getting they get the letter x months later saying okay, you you owe us more per month than you take than than your gross salary. Um, now, we, we do ask uh, in a ballpark what people have, but I don't need to know specifics on anything. Because, why? No tax if it's under $11.6 million. Who else in this room has more than $11.6 million other than the people in the front row? <laughs> hey, listen, we're in South Edison. I don't know anyone in South Edison that got 11. He, he, has, he raised his hand, he got 11 and a half million. Uh, the question that I have is, you had mentioned about the grandchildren, yeah. which I was thinking of doing also, but if the grandchildren are such a young age, and I don't... Okay, so so the question is, what the grandkids are of young age? That's it here, you, you get the book. Uh, um, okay, so we always have a clause in the will that says, kids don't get anything. Even 18, 19, 20 year olds don't get anything. Why not? Because... 19, 20 year old will do anything smart with money. Zero, I'd say yeah. And so we usually have clauses where it says, listen, no one gets any money until they're 21. However, the executor's gonna hold their money and use it for health, education, maintenance, and support. I'd say yeah. Now when people have minor children, we have a special clause in a will that says, hey, your kid's not getting any money until they're 
it's 22, some are 22, some are 25, the balance when they're 30. But the ex uh, executors holding the money can advance as much money as is needed for the support of that person. So, uh, you know, always, you know, the kid, you know, parents pass away. Hey, I'd say, yeah, we want our kid, uh, we want uh, the kid to go to uh, St. Thomas Bishop or War Law rather than local. Okay, listen, that's an investment. I'd say, yeah. Uh, that way the kid has money that instead of having to go to, uh, you know, Middlesex to save money, uh, they can say, listen, okay, we'll send you to like Monmouth or like a rich kid's school. I'd say, I remember years ago when I was looking at colleges, like, uh, you know, if it wasn't, you know, um, you know, state U or something inexpensive, like and my dad goes, listen, don't, don't, don't even fill out the application because, you know, you got, we got two of you after you to pay for. I ended up going to University of Scranton, I, I, uh, out in Pennsylvania. Uh, that was good to see. I was also, I was a runner, I'm still a runner. And I knew that it's a Division three school. And I knew I wasn't good enough to run at Georgetown and Villanova. So let me go with the, uh, the smallest school. Yeah. Uh, we do as again. Uh, now we remind everyone that your will can change any asset that there is a direct beneficiary. So what's that? If you have a bank account and it's joint or payable upon death, that person gets it. Uh, okay, will can't change that. If you have a CD uh, payable to X, they get it. If you have any other accounts, they get it. Life insurance, you know, again a contract, they get it. Um, brokerage accounts, they get it. A will can't change that. And you feel kind of bad because I was involved in a state one time where this niece of this uh, lady was the one that took care of the, uh, the aunt, drove around, made sure that her medications were filled. Now, of course, she was like, mm, I can't wait till my aunt dies to get some money because she was a good person. But the aunt, uh, the aunt had all these CDs because that was the big thing in the 1980s and 90s to have CDs, and at the bank, he goes, oh, you should have a, you should have a beneficiary on all these. Okay, I guess this one, this person, this one, this person, this one. Well, unfortunately, when the lady passed, let's say, uh, almost every asset had a direct beneficiary. So the person who was the real beneficiary on the will didn't get it. That's why I tell people, three different times I tell people that when, they're, when they come into my office, when we send a letter, and then we do the post will letter. Okay. Yeah. So, yes, sir. Are, are you saying that I should not they identify a beneficiary? Put everything in the. No, no, no. You can. What the question is? Who should you can you can still set up okay. beneficiaries on all the accounts. Just you got to make sure that that's who you want. A lot of sometimes people says I'm going to have one of my kids on the account with me for convenience, but that means they get the whole pot. That's no, it. No, yeah. If you want to have, if you want to have a couple kids as beneficiaries, that's cool. That's fine. No, but for simplicity perspective, right? If I have got ten bank accounts, ten bank accounts, and I got ten beneficiaries and all that, right? Yeah. Why not have everything in a bill so I don't have to go to ten? Well, yeah, that's, that's that's what most people do because what was happening? Most people just say, listen, everything is going to get divided equally amongst my kids before they change the tax law. We used to try to find ways to not have money into people's names and stuff like that because the estate amount used to start at six hundred seventy-five thousand dollars, which wasn't that much. But now again, it's eleven point uh, six million dollars. Lady in the back had a question. Her question was, "How, how do I get one of those books?" <laughs> okay, I, I walk back here and I go, "Hey, here's here's the book." All right. I have a question also. Though. Yeah. Is, is it a good thing to have a child, uh, an adult child, on your bank account as... Well, here's the thing. Uh, the question is, is it good to have an adult child on your bank account? Well, as long as it's not the major asset. Because do you have more than one child? Two. Yeah, two. So, here's what happens. If you pass away, the one that's on that account gets, the gets whatever's there. Yeah. Okay? And now, can, now. Can they go into the account anytime? It depends upon how you set it up with the bank. Oh, I can set it up with the yeah, bank. Yeah, you set it up with the bank. Yeah. So a lot of times what people do is that they, people will set up a checking account, have some money in so that they can have a kid that has access to pay bills, etc. Mm -hmm. You know, but, uh, you know, you don't want to put your biggest account with someone on it because uh, when you pass, 
I'm mm -hmm. saying, yeah, their spouse is going to say, hey, that's our money. That's well, that's our, that's our money. Mm -hmm. And uh, what often happens is the, uh, um, you know, everyone thinks, oh, I'm sure they'll do the right thing. No. Uh, but their spouse says, no, yes, sir. Uh, I read somewhere that uh, estate planning is better now. Wills are out of date. Uh, that's wrong. That's wrong. That's that, that's okay. Let me ask you a question. Do you want to have Do you want to have a five thousand dollar trust or do you want to have a four hundred dollar will? Pick one. I hope you pick the five thousand dollar trust. That's <laughs> it. Uh, when people see there, there are people that are trust salesmen. And he goes, oh, we'll set up this elaborate financial plan again. Now, in other states where it's very complicated, you want to do. Uh, but there's only there's only two ways to, uh, main ways. You either have a will or you have a trust when you die. Or if there's accounts that go direct to, to people. But you always want to have a will because there's always assets that don't have a direct beneficiary. And so, yeah. Something simple as a car, or someone could have had all the assets like, in, a, in an account, but also then they may have inherited money or acquired something. And plus, in your will, you're selecting someone to be the captain of the ship and the person in charge. Mm -hmm. Let's see, they're the one in charge, and no one can tell them what to do except for a superior court judge. But they say we will go to probate. I'm saying, well, I get, I get, I tell people, there used to be a, a trust salesman got in trouble. Go, oh, avoid probate. Probate's the devil. Probate costs $150. Yeah. What do you try to do? In other states, probate's bad. New Jersey, probate is easy. And I get, I, everyone, uh, I, I'm an honest person. I'd say, if someone says, I want to avoid probate and have one of these $5,000 trusts, I will be glad to do it. But you know, but is probate is time consuming process. No, it doesn't. I'd say most of the states uh, you guys don't read. Talk to a lawyer, don't <laughs> read what you don't read what's on the internet. I'd say, uh, you know, because it goes, it's not New Jersey specific. I'd say yeah. Uh, none of our states go like basically it's usually we gotta sell the house. I'd say yeah. Uh, and a lot of times it takes as long as the house gets sold and then um, the executor has to open up a bank account. We uh, liquidate assets. Most people can do that by themselves or deal with the brokerage accounts. Then uh, when the money's ready to be distributed, um, then we send out a letter to all the beneficiaries. And we, uh, you know, the executor, either they or the accountant has like a little like a, you know, Excel spreadsheet or something typed up saying, this is what came in. These are what the expenses are. This is what people are in individually getting. And then we prepare a document called the release of funding bonds. And okay, everyone sign this. And then we file with the surrogate and and, and it's done. I'd say, yeah. So again, in other states, it's more complicated. Now, I bet, okay, so we typically have beneficiaries of who's getting stuff. And you gotta make, then your will has to be very clear who, if that beneficiary passes, who gets their share. So in the, like, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, um, the, I'll call it the Leave it to Beaver family from the 50s. Um, <coughs> Ward's will says everything goes to his wife. Afterwards, it goes to uh, uh, his two kids. And uh, if either Wally or Beaver die, it goes to uh, their, their kids. If no, I don't have any kids, it goes to the surviving kids. More and more people are in second marriages. So in second marriages, though, I tell people, you know, usually the, the couple come in, they're all lovey-dovey, he goes, oh, we decided everything's gonna go to each other, and then afterwards it gets split equally, you know, half to my family, half to his family. He goes, no, no, that is a horrible idea, that is a terrible idea, and I highly recommend against it. And the, the couple will say, why? He goes, well, because the day after you die, they can get a new will done and say, you know, the other side is out. or." Uh, or a lot of times people go into, you know, I was with a couple, I goes, okay, uh, we have to uh, uh, avoid what happens when there's a third marriage. That's the, other, that's the ugly line. And it goes, listen, you know, no one wants to hear that, but, you know, uh, listen, you know, 
You know, see, people get email every day. You know, uh, lonely guys get something, uh, something from the like, uh, the beautiful Ukrainian Russian girl that wants to come over and get married, and then the women get the emails from someone that wants to get married, but they need money to pay to their plane flight. Seriously, some scammer that lives down in Camden. Yes, ma'am. You, 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 you got a book. Yeah. They got, could you exclude some that like? Oh. Well, that's very Over, interesting. Like, oh. uh, so, for example, if this is just a no, if my if uh, my mother wanted to leave money to me, but if but not to my husband, yeah. let's say that. Okay. Well, well, let's let's go back. Uh, the only person that you can't make penniless is uh, your uh, your spouse. Let's see. But otherwise, it is your right to do what you want. And at, uh, one of the clients came in and you know, she goes, do I have to treat my, all my children equally? I goes, no, you know, it's your money. Like, uh, I get, you know, what do you have? What, uh, what's your concern? He goes, well, I got four kids, but one of them we don't hear from much. She lives on the West Coast. He goes, well, let me ask you a question. On Mother's Day, did you get a card or a call? No. How about on your birthday, a card or a call? No. How about Christmas, a card or a call? No. Well, the question really is, should you leave them anything? You know, you know, that person hasn't done anything to deserve it, and that's going to be the most horrible person after you pass away because they're going to be knocking on the door. Where's my money? Where's my money? I'd say, yeah, the day of the the day of their funeral, they don't go to. You know, they're going to be saying, "I want, I want my my fair share." So, it is your right. I mentioned you can leave something grand. You don't have to treat uh, people equally. Now, money that someone gets who's married, that is their money. If they get unmarried, because like a divorce is an ugly word, I call it unmarried. Let's see, um, monies that you get through inheritance do not count in divorce for equitable distribution. So that's your money, as long as though you keep it separate. You know, but if you use the money to, you know, buy a bigger house and put the spouse's name on it, then then they can like they oh that's our that's our joint money or it was a it was a gift it was a gift to me. You know, so that? sometimes when people have a concern on that, he goes, hey, we're going to make it for the benefit of the grandkids, but the, uh, the, the, uh, the mom is the trustee. The spouse has no right. Uh, the, uh, if, if you're inheriting, the spouse doesn't have rights to anything. Did I answer the question? Yes, thank you. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, now, um, I guess, ma'am. Uh, if a benefit... Do you get a book? I already have a book. Okay, good. Okay. Um, if beneficiary and a person designated in the will, beneficiary versus beneficiary in the financial bank or a it's whoever you want. Is that different? If by the, that, if, they can be different. Which one supersedes what? Which one? The, the whoever you have with the bank controls, okay. a will can't change that. Will cannot. Just like yeah, just like uh, a will can't change who your beneficiary is of life insurance. Let's say. When I got married, of course, I got to change all my accounts and make my wife the beneficiary. One of the life insurance policies, I forgot about. So I was married 15 years. In fact, hey, my wife, my dad's still the beneficiary on you know a fifty thousand dollar life insurance policy. I had. You know, well, two things. I'm sure my dad do the right thing, and uh, you know, I'm going to be living to 120 anyway. So you know, they got to wait a long time before they get they get my money. Um, so now, uh, we're talking about people, some people have what's called specific bequests. What's a specific bequest? A specific bequest, uh, you know, sometimes ladies say, listen, I want everything divided equally um, amongst my kids. However, my jewelry, I want to go to my daughter or my granddaughter. Mm -hmm. Because if my son is the executor, he's gonna bring it to cash for gold and say, what do you give me for this junk? <laughs> uh, some guys, uh, are like uh, you know they uh, they go hunting and they have like they have guns. He goes, hey, I want my son to have my guns because like if I pass, uh, my daughter's gonna call up the Edison police. He goes, listen, I found guns in the house. And I just want you to take them away for free. You know, just take them away. Did a will for a fellow. He was he was unmarried. He had one daughter. Everything goes to the daughter except except the purpose of him doing the will. There was a musket that. Uh, he had that had been passed down from generation to generation for the French and Indian War. And his job was to make sure that it was transferred to the next male in the family, his nephew. 
Everything else went to the daughter, but his daughter would see this like, you know, rusty, crappy thing. Even the cash for gold will not take it. <laughs> Throw it out. Now, okay, some people write stuff down. Write this down. You ready? Make sure it is a self-proving will. Uh -huh. yeah, I didn't write it down. <laughs> self-proving. <laughs> What's a self-proving will? Yeah. All right. Under the old law, that's say person signs, and there's two witnesses. And then though the executive had to locate one of the two witnesses and had them go to the circus office and sign an affidavit saying they were the witness and they saw everything happen. Uh, so my grandma passed, for example, it was the old way, and we locate one of the witnesses and the uh, lady goes, yeah, I used to work in that law office, I could be a witness. My fee's $500 in like 1988 money. We go, screw you, we're not my dad as well, paying you 800 or $500. Lady goes, we'll get the other witness. Well, she's dead. Yeah, my fee's $500. <laughs> now, we could have said, screw you, uh, but then we would have to file a complaint order show cause in the Superior Court, and then go to the Superior Court, plan on paying like three, four grand. So we had to pay the extortion. Now, see, so uh, there was a, uh, um, so there was a change in the law to make what's called the self-proving will. And what that means is that person signs, the two witnesses sign, then an attorney and notary signs, then there's another page with some language that says self-proving will, basically. Person signs, two witnesses, and the notary. That way, the uh, executive does not have to locate any of the, any of the two witnesses. <laughs> yeah. There used to be an, uh, an office, office of Carteret. Uh, they'd advertise, hey, we do wills cheap. We do it for only 75 bucks. Yeah. Someone goes, okay, how come you charge, like, you know, uh, 400 to 300, they only charge 75. Well, they do it wrong on purpose. They don't do a self proving will, and then after you die, uh, you gotta go pay them to go to the surrogate's office. And I remember running into the, uh, the, one of the attorneys in the office, and I, I know the guy, he goes, hey Willie, you guys are gonna get in trouble for doing that. That's like a doctor not doing the whole surgical procedure, so then they can you know, have the person come back and do another surgical procedure and build the insurance company. And he said, well, if someone, if someone want, really wants a self-proving will, we'll do it for him. I go, Willie, no one at Carteret knows what a self-proving will is. Well, once yeah. it's probated, it's probated, yeah, right? Exactly. No, but it doesn't get it. But you got to pay them. And it's all about making it easy. Oh, yeah. And mm -hmm. and you got to find one of the two witnesses, okay? If old man Feingold was the witness, well, he's dead. Yeah, I know. Okay? <laughs> um, Sorry, yeah, that's yeah. my town. Yeah. Now, yesterday, <laughs> ironically, um, um, uh, someone came in, and all she wanted was a codicil to her will. Uh, she wanted to change who the executor was. Uh -huh. And I looked to see the attorney who did it, and he goes, oh, uh, Carl Myrton. It's like, uh, you know, uh, he was the attorney when I bought the building on Woodbridge Avenue. Okay, uh, and I looked at the doctor, and he goes, do you remember me? Do you remember we had that program, and I told you about self-proving will, and all the signatures and stuff? Well, what was done in 2005 was not a self-proving will. And... You're not gonna be able to bring Carl to the surrogate's office and the lady who worked there, you know, who knows where she's at. You need a new, you need a new will. I'd say, uh, you know, you know so, uh, so it's all about, I'd say, there's, don't use cheap stuff online because it will not be a self-proving will. Now, I also mentioned in the beginning, if there's no will, the person who becomes in charge is called the administrator. Well, there's a law in New Jersey that even the executor has to take out a bond unless the will says no bond is required. So my wills have a clause that no bond is required because we trust our executor person because it's usually one of our kids or someone we trust. But a lot of the, the cheap things you find online don't have that. So how much have you saved by using a cheap form online? You haven't saved anything because they're going to have to spend the grand on the bond. Because uh, even, the, even if all the beneficiaries agree, the law says a bond got to be taken out. So typically the attorney prepares a document, we, uh, they, they mail it to you, hard copy. There's no online depository for wills or powers of attorney. We mail you the draft will, we tell everyone, listen, it is your job to read it now. We put in bold the stuff you need to read. What do you need to read? The spelling of people's names and who the players are. Let's see. Uh, 
Um, uh, but and then when we sign no, no one can be in no beneficiary is allowed to be in the room, so there's no issue down the road of whether or not someone was twisting someone's arm to do something or not. Let's see. So uh, what we uh, what we do is uh, we ask people three simple questions. And I call everyone up. That's what's good about having these new cars with the hands-free stuff that I can press a button and it goes, dial this or dial that, and I'm still like holding two hands on the steering wheel. And I talk to people, and then when they come in to sign, we ask three questions. Did you read it? Does it contain what you want? Do you have an idea to prove who you are? Nothing more. Okay. But... You take the documents home. The documents are your property. They're not my property. We only keep a copy. A photocopy can't be admitted to, uh, to the surrogate. Um, think of the surrogate as a fancy name for the will clerk. So you want to make sure that your original will is in a spot where it won't get flooded and also that executive number two to get, can get to it. So a lot of people, they'll go to uh, Costco, buy one of those fireproof boxes, and put the will and other documents in it. You don't need... It doesn't make sense to put it into a safe because no one's going to steal it. A safe is so we can put stuff that isn't going to be stolen. And and good luck uh, on someone having a combination. Let's see. When I had my first house in Edison and Edison on Vineyard Road, one of the girls, like when uh, Costco first opened up, she bought this like big, big, heavy safe. Of course, she didn't remember the combination. So what good's a big, heavy metal safe? I guess like the recycling people like uh, you know took it in. Then. Um, um, and then you want to make sure you, uh, you give, you know, you, it's your option whether or not you give copies to the kids or not give to the kids. If you're not treating them equally, don't tell them anything and, and, uh, and secret stuff. Okay. Okay. That's what, that's what we got on Wills. Now we're going to, uh, we're going to, we're going to move forward to the other documents. So, question, oh, yes, ma'am. Inheritance. How does that affect somebody on disability? Let's see. Oh, that's a good question. Okay. Uh, it affects them poorly. poorly. Badly. The question is if someone's on disability. Oh, did you get a book, by the way? No. Oh, see, she, we were, uh, uh, we used to say the word, I'd say, we don't want to jip you, but that's, that's a, you can't say that one either. Yeah, no, except, son, except on this day. Hey. disability. Yeah. So, I know that. so here's what's, what some people do that have a chunk of money. They will say, listen, I'm going to set up a special needs trust for this child. But you got to find someone who's willing to be the trustee for that money. Okay. You know, I was talking to a fellow uh, last week. Uh, we were talking to the BMW. He was like, you know, a lot of money. But he goes, okay, your son is only 40 years old. I'd say, yeah, he's in decent health. Health. Who's going to be the trustee for another 20, 30, whatever years? A bank is not going to do it because you don't have enough money. He goes, what do you mean? He goes, you only have a million dollars in assets. Typically, they want like you know, uh, you know, uh, more more zeros involved because they're they're limited in what they can charge as a as a commission. So we have a question. And ironically, I'm doing a program on Wednesday for the state bar, and it's called um, I'd say estate planning, where um, it was like uh, the difficult child, not the handicapped child, because we know if our if we have kids that are handicapped, we want to like you know you know protect them. The problem child is the one that has like, you know, let's say substance abuse problems, alcohol problems, money problems, etc. Where we know that, hey, let's say uh, if they got, uh, I, was, uh, I was in a matter where I said, Judge, the reason why mom set up this trust for the one kid is because if he would have got $100, he would have bought $100 worth of booze. Let's see, if he would have gotten $1,000, he would have bought $100 worth of booze and gave the other 900 to one of his buddies like, uh, after they were drinking. You know, so in that case, uh, the mom set up a, a trust for the benefit, it's, we call it a spendthrift trust, and it, uh, uh, one of the kids was the trustee, and similar to a special needs trust where the, uh, the trustee has the sole discretion on whether or not to give any money. It's not supervised by the court, and if that kid wants to say, I'm not giving you anything. I don't like the way you, you talk to me over the phone. Let's see. They're pretty much out of luck. Let's see. Um, but are we, are we have a question on, um, on our um, you know, questionnaire form we send out. Are any of the kids getting like, uh, Social Security uh, or like, uh, some type of government assistance? Because we don't want them to get a chunk of money outright. 
so that then they lose what, what, they're, what they're getting. Right. But that becomes a little bit more complicated than we can do in a 45 minute program. Okay, uh, yes ma'am. Talking of inheritance, if I inherit from my parents, I don't have to pay tax on that, right? If it's New Jersey. Oh, if it is in the sense, uh, if I inherit from New Jersey, you mean to say. Yeah, New Jersey does not have an inheritance tax, okay? Uh, no, no. Uh, so no federal tax and no New Jersey tax. That's correct. So if I inherit, for, say my parents, they lived in India, they passed away in India. That's right. No New Jersey, there's no New Jersey tax. No, no, no. Tell them, uh, tell me you want your money now. <laughs> you have a question to back, ma'am. Uh, my question is, is, I've heard terms will, living will, and trust. How, what, how, what do they all mean? Oh, I don't know, I thought you were the speaker. <laughs> okay, okay, so. A will takes care of your assets if you pass away. The will doesn't control anything while uh, while you're alive. Some people, to try to avoid probate, put their assets into a trust. But that means you are retitling it so the trust owns it. So if someone comes in and goes, okay, I want to uh, set up a trust to, uh, in case I have to go to the nursing home. Well, that means that you're gonna be setting up a irrevocable trust. You will never own the, uh, the property again. Someone else is gonna be the trustee and you gotta go five years before you apply for a nursing home. Um, in other states, trusts, are, I mentioned, are very popular because the probate process of going to the will clerk is very complicated. New Jersey is relatively easy. Now, I'm gonna talk um, now about two of the documents. This uh, power of attorney is one, and a living will advance directors is number two. Mm -hmm. A will is basically for your assets while you're alive, where you're giving the power to someone you trust, you know, a spouse or a child, to make sure your bills are paid and they can act on your behalf financially. Living will? Uh, I know, it's a power of attorney. Power of attorney. I'm thinking of living will as you're in a coma, irreversible, you're in a doctor, but I'll, I'll touch upon that after I do the, uh, the power of attorney thing. So, with a power of attorney, you're giving the power to someone that they can make sure your bills are paid, you know, uh, if a house needs to be sold, a house can be sold, they can call the brokerage company and say, hey, listen, we need to move some funds or sell something, you know, uh, and, they, and you have the legal authority to act on a person's behalf. A power of attorney, uh, uh, you say you're selecting someone similar to the will. It's usually the same person. So you have a personal representative, one of the power of attorney, and a personal representative, two. That's it. The power of attorney is effective either right away or only upon disability. Uh, most people, especially married people, make it effective right away. Let's see, yeah, you need to trust them or not trust them. Not see. Um, so a, a power of attorney that's effective right away is called a durable power of attorney because it's durable now and it's durable even if you become incapacitated. A springing power of attorney does not spring into effect until you've been uh, rendered uh, uh, incapacitated by a doctor in a written document. Uh, one of my clients uh, says, Kenny, uh, you're using legal stuff on me. He goes, explain to me in Carpenter's terms what this stuff means. I goes, okay, for the power of attorney, if it's effective right away, that means that uh, your son can steal all your money right away. <laughs> if it's effective only upon disability, he has to get a note from the doctor before he steals all your money. <laughs> Does that explain it? Yes. Okay. okay, do you trust your son? Yes, okay, then, then no problem. Uh, now, I'd say also, write down, don't use cheap forms online for the power of attorney also. A lot of the banks and brokerage accounts would give people a hard time. You'd have a perfectly good power of attorney. And, uh, you know, well, um, Mid-Atlantic or First Fidelity, oh, well, it's not done in our form, so we're, we're not going to honor it. So the legislature changed, uh, created a law and says it makes reference to New Jersey statute. They have to honor it if they do business in New Jersey. If they don't, they're subject to uh, penalties and a complaint against them uh, by the Department of Banking. However, it has to have uh, reference to Section 2, Appeal 1991, C-95, uh, colon C 46 colon 2B 11. And if, uh, I'm pretty sure that some cheap thing you find online is not going to have that. So don't use online stuff. Go meet with a professional. Listen, I'd say again. Um, 
You are good. You are good. We're talking about the hair and the no hair thing. Uh, so yeah, uh, you guys that are over 40 years old, do you remember when you were young and you changed your own oil? I would say yeah. You know, of course, I like, remember my dad would you know, take me out into the driveway and teach me how to change my own oil, and I was proud I learned something. Well, do I do that anymore? No, I don't want to do that. You know, I, I have guys that will do it and they'll do it better. In my first house at Linden Road, I was so proud that, you know, you had the landlines and you could connect the wires and, make, you know, have extra land. So I, I tried to do some electrical work myself. Unfortunately, there was no red uh, or what, it was all like black wires, but I assumed that I was doing the right thing when I, because I was trying to change the uh, two prongs into three prongs. So, you know, I, I did such a good, I did a good job. First, my wife turned the, uh, the uh, when the circuit breaker turned it off. Let's see. Uh, but, uh, of course, we didn't have anything marked, so she just turned it off at half the house. <laughs> okay, I yelled out and said, okay, turn the power back on. I, I got it done. Turns the power back on. Oh, sparks and smoke. I goes, I goes, turn it off, turn it off, turn it off. <laughs> okay. Uh, and that's when I realized, you know what? I think electricians are much better at doing electrical work than me trying to do it myself. And the same thing nowadays when people are trying to figure, oh, I'm going to try to figure out how to do this own my own for myself. You know, uh, I mean, it's one thing if you watch a YouTube video on, you know, how to like, uh, you know, make a better garden and like, you know, do gardening, but uh, YouTube videos don't teach you how to do electrical work. And also like, uh, uh, the laws are different in every single state. So someone doing a, uh, you know, talking about a document for another state is not good in New Jersey. Any, any questions on powers of attorney? Yes, ma'am. If you have property in two different states and you're going to put a will in, you just, you, you, you need two lawyers? Yeah. How does that work? Well, here, I tell people, here's what I tell people. If they have property in another state, they should have a power of attorney for that property in that state. Not because I'm trying to give like a lawyer in the other state the ability to make an extra hundred dollars, but um, I'd say, good luck, the bank in that other state is going to say, hey, we don't know anything about New Jersey PL 1991 C call to be, you know, it's not in our form. We're not going to honor it. So, um, my father law is 93. I'd say, yeah, uh, we have a power of attorney here in New Jersey, and the will's in New Jersey, but we well, said, listen, I told my wife, get another power of attorney in Florida because also the, um, uh, the Merrill Lynch person was saying, ah, I don't know, I don't know, uh, how do I know this power of attorney is. It's on, it's on foreign, uh, it's a foreign, it's in New Jersey. So it'll be fine. Go to the guy there, bring him in, have it done. Um, and listen, it is important to have a power of attorney, okay? A power of attorney a lot of times for married people is more important than the will. Let's see, if I have a will and, uh, you know, say, uh, I died on Wednesday, I'm gonna love my wife gets everything anyway, right? But if I had a heart attack on Wednesday, my wife has no legal right to do anything without a power of attorney. And the important reason, for, all you guys should make sure that in the next month you get a power of attorney done, unless you can guarantee that you're never gonna get sick. You're never gonna get sick and never lose the ability to drive around and do your stuff, which isn't gonna happen. We always get calls, I need to get power of attorney over mom, dad, or uncle Joe, or whoever. I goes, well, you can't get power of attorney over anyone. They have to. They have to uh, the person has to affirm it to give the power, sign the document and give the power of attorney to you. How could I get power of attorney? Uh, you can't. They have to do it. They got to. Uh, they got to contact the lawyer. And uh, I am very careful. Listen, let's see. I worked very hard to get my license, and I'm not going to do anything to jeopardize my license. Let's see. And. Uh, you know, I, I have to see the person, and I'm very, and if, uh, if it smells, then I don't do it. I'd say, yeah, I, and I give an example of like, yeah, well, uh, when I first opened up my own office in, uh, I don't know, 1990, I was so happy to get anyone calling at all. And this fellow says, listen, dad wants to do no well, and he also wants to sign a house over to, uh, to me, but uh, he can't, he has a bad leg, he can't get around too much. Okay, can, can you come to the house? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll charge a couple dollars. I'll go there. So I go to the house. You know, it was I was I, I remember because it was the first nice day of spring and the robin was out and the sun was out and like uh, you know oh finally it's gonna stop snowing 
And uh, the house is by Midtown Little League, where I was the crappiest right fielder in Midtown Little League history. And, um, you know, the son didn't live with dad, but, you know, he, he, he was waiting there. He goes, oh, come on in, I'll introduce you to dad. And uh, opens up the door, and he goes, now, hey, dad, dad, this is an attorney, and he's explaining to you why you should sign the house over to me. And the old man is like watching TV, looks up, what? Now, of course, we got to talk over the TV, and Dad's not wearing a hearing aid. Uh, Dad, this is an attorney, and he's going to explain why you should sign the house over to me. Dad looks up and goes, I'm not signing the house over to you. You'll sell it and kick me out. <laughs> and that's when I realized, of course, that son never told Dad that he's bringing me over. So, I require to this. If someone's that ill that they can't get around, no problem. There's a short form where the doctor got to sign a little note saying they're competent to do a will, deed, power of attorney, whatever document. And I want to talk to them first before I go out there. So I'm not wasting my time or anyone's time. Because uh, Johnny, who I went to grammar school with, uh, mom like uh, lived in my neighborhood in Edison. Uh, and he uh, goes, oh, mom wants to, uh, uh, you know, mom wants to sign the house over to me. Okay, uh, she can't come in, she got, uh, you know, Oxygen tank, okay. Doctor signs a note. She's perfectly uh, competent ahead. She just, you know, is on oxygen tank. Okay, I call her up. Okay, Mrs. B, what do you want to do? She goes, I want to sign the house over to Johnny. Uh, okay, Mrs. B, how many kids you got? Hey, Dan, can you do me a favor and like uh, pass out those like uh, forms, those evaluation things? Okay, Mrs. B, how many kids you got? She goes, I got three. Well, did you understand that? If you sign a house over to Johnny, the other two aren't going to get anything. Is that really what you want? And he goes, oh, no, I want all my children treated equally. That's what I thought. Put Johnny back on the phone. <laughs> now, that was an example where I suggested Mrs. B and Johnny, and maybe if you want to do that, then you probably want to put the house into a trust and not just give it to them outright because they can kick you out. Or if there's a judgment against them, then it's a judgment against the estate. Um, so sometimes a trust sometimes does have uh, benefits. And I'll give you I'll give you a quick yes, ma'am. Can the power does the power of attorney has to be in the same state that you live in in Jersey? Uh, yeah, you can't go to another state because you live here. No, I'm saying if the child that you want could be. Oh, the child could live anywhere. This is what I'm Yeah, I mean, they could, they, could, they could live in, like, uh, you know, Alaska. They could live in Romania. It just sometimes makes it difficult to, yeah. you know, uh, do that. But it's better to have someone, even if they're not in New Jersey, than nothing nothing at all. all right, so, I finally have a question. Can the executor buy the house? Uh, yes, as long as the, the executor can the executor buy the house. Okay. The answer is um, if it's cool with everyone. Oh, is, is that is that you know you got to be cool like Fonzie. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, Mr. Uh, um, Mr. M was the executor. There's a small house in Woodbridge that Grandma lived in, and he goes, okay, so we can avoid the whole realtor thing. Good news, my brother's son is going to buy the house, and we came up with an agreement of you know uh, you know ninety thousand dollars, a hundred thousand dollars. He goes, a hundred thousand dollars. For a house, you know, you know, I want to say, I, I'll buy it for 105. <laughs> and he goes, isn't that a little light? He goes, oh, it's a very small house and needs upkeep. He goes, okay, let's, let's see. That's fine as long as the other two agree, you know, uh, get it in writing from them that it's agreed. This way is protecting you from their spouses, you know, that say, hey, you got, everyone got, they were, uh, we're getting chipped. Well, good thing. Let's see, brother number one, whose son it was, says, of course I agree, it's my son. The third brother goes, you can sell it for whatever he wants, but the house is worth 300000 As long as I get my 100000 I don't care how much you sell it to him for. <laughs> he goes, I want, I want to, uh, you know, uh, yeah, all you need to do is type in the street address, and, um, you know, there's like three different sites that'll give you a ballpark estimate of what it's worth. Right. Uh, so... Uh, so, okay, so let me talk about why uh, an, an area where a trust might be a good idea. You know, some people do it for, um, you, know, uh, you know, in case I got to go to nursing. So, 
but it's a five-year look back. Uh, this uh, this Mr. M, uh, he had a uh, decent amount of assets, so he goes, you know what, I'm gonna give my son 400,000, I'm gonna give my daughter 300,000. I'm gonna do a new deed, my son can own half, my daughter can own half. And this way, if five years go by, uh, you know, Medicaid uh, will pay for me in a nursing home and uh, it won't get in. My assets won't get eaten up. Let's see. He should have been a trust because like, uh, no one predicted that the son was going to die. So after the son died, who owned half of his stuff? His daughter in law. Oh. And the family sent a nice letter to the daughter in law. Listen, can you do us a favor and give us back all the money? And sign a new deed to say, uh, you're out and uh, he's, ba he's back in. And I represent a daughter law. She goes, what do I have to do? He goes, uh, you tell him to go screw. <laughs> you know, that's your, that's your money. Now, now we worked it out, of course, uh, you know, on some, the family. But, uh, you know, I remember the uh, judge saying, okay, let me get this right. He made the gift, but now they want to get back. You know, a gift's a gift. Yeah. Okay, uh, we're running out of time. Let me talk about the uh, uh, Living Wills Advanced Directors. Did everyone grab one of these? Okay, good. Don't read it and uh, no. Uh, the reason why it makes this is one of because we put the language word for word from the uh, State uh, Medical Ethics Commission in the will as to what, uh, uh, this way doctors are familiar with it. And, uh, you know, uh, so. Basically, the will, living will is the document where you're giving instructions to hospitals and doctors, hey, listen, if I'm in a coma, irreversible condition, there's no hope for me, then I don't want to be on long-term feeding tubes and respirators and stuff like that. The living will is not the document for you. It's a document so you're not putting your family on the spot so that they're not put in the corner to, add, to, to make those uh, difficult decisions. Because, Jesus. I remember one time when a doctor asked me the, you know, the question, okay, should we remove life support today? I goes, geez, doctor, because the person does not have a living will. I feel bad. Now, you know the right decision is for someone who's 92 years old that's never going to walk the planet again or, you know, or wake up, but you hate to be the one to say, okay, yeah, yeah, turn, turn the switch off. I couldn't even do it for my dog. Well, my dog was like, you know, sick and dying. You know, I, have, I told my wife, you got to go do it. Otherwise, I'm going to spend another $8,000. Yes, ma'am. You want to know about my dog? No, if you have a living will, if you are in one of those situations yeah. where they're asking you, you know, yeah. what do you want to do, do you have to mention that they have a living oh, will? Oh, that, that's the better thing. That's the better. That's why you have it. See, also, there's a, there's a federal law that says if you go into a hospital, they have to ask, do you have a living will? Mm -hmm. If so, let's have a copy. Right. So the better thing is you give, a co you give copies of your living will to the doctors to the hospitals that way they know ahead of time so they don't have to ask ask you all those ugly questions so the and, living will always like outranks someone's well as long as someone can talk for themselves they have a right to say hey you know what i changed my mind <laughs> i want I I, I I i you know you know i want to live i want to live let's see uh but it's more when, when someone doesn't have any like uh you know can't can't talk yes ma'am between the healthcare directive and a living world. Uh, well, here's it. I usually tell people we kind of consider them the same thing. See, I got you know, living will is easier to say than uh, you know, advanced director for healthcare and medical proxy. Right, right. So, in the living will document, you're uh, similar to the will where you have an executive one, executive two, the power of attorney, personal representative one, person personal representative two. You're picking someone, and it's usually the same person. Unless sometimes someone says, listen, uh, I'm picking one of my kids that has a little bit more of a medical background uh, to do it. But it's important to have because here's what else happens. Uh, under federal law, the doctors can't talk to the family without something in writing. So in our living will, we have a, a HIPAA clause that says under the uh, federal HIPAA law, you have a right to talk to this person is my number one, this person is number two. Because also what we found was, you know, all of a sudden someone's in a hospital and the kid that has been around for uh, years, all of a sudden they fly in and they barge into the hospital room and goes, okay, I'm in charge now. And this is what I decide uh, we're going to do. 
kind of like when Reagan got shot years ago, and Al Haig went on TV and goes, okay, I'm in charge now. And uh, although, you know, uh, well, constitutionally, you're not. You know, although he really did run the White House for a while. So, uh, and you're living well, you're saying, okay, fluids and nutrition to be withheld and provided. And I have the language in that uh, brochure I gave you. And 80% uh, of people say, listen, there's no hope for me. Then, okay, no more fluids and nutrition. The next section says directive as to medical treatment, but we usually use the word machines and things like that. So 99% of people say, listen, it is no hope for me that no machines, not, none, none of that stuff. Uh, uh, and the funny thing is, when I was first married, you know, you're all lovey-dovey, and my wife says, oh, if something happened to you, I could never make this, you know, you know tell them to remove ice and pour. He goes, okay, fine, I'll just leave my dad, because he's logical like Mr. Spock from Star Trek. So then 25 years in the future, we think, okay, my wife goes, wait, so if you get dead, I get $800,000 tax-free, and I never have to work another day in my life. That's what you're telling me? <laughs> yes. Yes. So, okay, so we went over the big three documents. I um, let's say, uh, now, uh, I always ask, um, one of my colleagues that does the programs with me is Dan Fabrizio. Uh, he's with um, New York Life, and I'm asking him to uh, come up uh, for a little while and, and talk about some common financial planning mistakes that he sees people make uh, because they haven't made any changes in 20 years and their, st their money is in CDs getting 1% interest. Thank Dan you, Fabrizio. Ken. Thank you, Ken. Hello, everyone. What's your last name? Dan Fabrizio. Uh, 